Hello and welcome to Inside Iraq. I'm Jassim Azawi. When President Bush decided to invade Iraq, the neoconservative right wing in the U.S. proved invaluable allies. With an aggressive media and propaganda campaign, they silenced critics and blunted the message of anti-war demonstrators. They provided the president with the ideological reasoning he needed to invade Iraq and topple Saddam's regime. Subsequent events in Iraq have led some neocons to abandon their support for the president and accuse him of mishandling the war. But others have remained staunch supporters of the president, the invasion, and the continued occupation of Iraq. In 2003, American forces rolled into Baghdad to topple the regime of Saddam Hussein. The neoconservatives in Washington were the architects of the war. They persuaded George Bush of the importance of invading Iraq, unseating Saddam, and transforming the country into a beacon of democracy in the Middle East. The neocons laid the ideological groundwork for the war. They argued Saddam's regime should be toppled on human rights grounds. They claimed the US was duty bound to remove tyrants regardless of international law. They insisted that the impact of the war would inspire Arabs throughout the region to marginalize extremists. These sorts of arguments gave President Bush the ammunition he needed to silence his critics. They're striving to build a modern democracy on the rubble of three decades of tyranny in a region of the world that has been hostile to freedom. I think actually the neoconservatives uh, will try to paint a withdrawal of troops from Iraq perhaps as a victory depending on um, the conditions of that withdrawal. If American troops withdraw from Iraq and Iraq is, remains a stable U.S. ally, if Iraq um, you know, grows and prospers at the time of withdrawal, the neocons will say, look, we went in, we did our work, it was hard, it was painful, we spent a lot of money, but we succeeded. On the other hand, if at the time of withdrawal of U.S. troops from Iraq, um, Iraq is a mess, uh, there's no oil coming out of Iraq, there's killings, there's the lack of stability, then I think it, w it will sort of damage their agenda. But some of the neocons are distancing themselves from the Iraq adventure. Now the financial and human cost of the war has reached such staggering heights. With almost $1 trillion spent and more than 4,000 American troops killed, a group of neocons, including Pentagon advisor Richard Pearl, are beginning to criticize President Bush for mismanaging the war. But other neocons remain adamant in their belief that the decision to invade and occupy Iraq was the right thing to do. In this camp falls former U.S. ambassador to the U.N., John Bolton. They argue it is too early to pass a judgment on an event that will change the history of the region and destiny of its people. The road to democracy and prosperity in the Middle East must, they say, pass through the gates of Baghdad. To discuss the role of the neocons in the Iraq war, I'm delighted to welcome from Washington, D.C., former U.S. envoy to the United Nations Ambassador John Bolton. Ambassador, on the eve of the war, did you expect Iraq to unfold and to degenerate into the disaster that we saw over the months and years? Well, I don't think anybody knew exactly what would happen. The first concern, obviously, was the swift defeat of Saddam's military uh, and avoiding what we all feared uh, he might do as his regime fell, like lighting the oil wells on fire, causing massive refugee problems and the like. So I think people were very happy with the swift defeat of uh, the Iraqi military uh, and that there was no humanitarian tragedy. But I don't think anybody in Iraq or in the United States uh, knew exactly what would happen next. I'm surprised you would say that because the writing was on the wall, senior military commanders as well as the CIA, let, let alone think tanks and university professors, they uh, warned the president, they warned the administration not to go into this war in such a haste. And pretty much they criticized the neocons for putting some ideology about this war. It's going to be a cakewalk and it's going, we are going to be greeted by flowers. 
Well, I think many parts of the Iraqi population were happy to be liberated. I think among the Kurds, for example, uh, there'd be near unanimous relief uh, that Saddam Hussein was uh, finally toppled. And I think among the Shiite population in Iraq uh, that that was very substantially the view as well. Uh, what I think everybody understood, however, was there were extensive animosities uh, inside Iraq that had built up over decades, if not centuries in some cases, having nothing to do with the American-led invasion. And I don't think anybody uh, could have predicted uh, the direction that that was going to turn out. Well, that is uh, perhaps uh, among certain group, but uh, people who knew exactly what Iraq was all about, they predicted that uh, certain sectarian uh, cleavages as well as even civil war was going to happen. One of the abiding myths about the neoconservatives, and that's the theme of our subject, that they did not know what is going to happen in Iraq. That is just simply not true, is it, Ambassador? No, I think there were a lot of different views about what would happen, uh, and I think that was being uh, communicated not only by uh, American intelligence and military commanders, but by the large uh, Iraqi diaspora in the Western world some of whom were Kurds, uh, some of whom were Shia, some of whom were Sunni. There were a lot of different opinions. Would you consider yourself, Ambassador, a neocon? No, you know, we have a definition of neocon going back to the Reagan administration, and that is a neocon is a liberal who has been mugged by reality, uh, and I have never been a liberal. That definition is by Irving Kristol, uh, aptly described what happened about uh, how uh, the administration, for instance, uh, the Nixon administration and the detente, how they dealt with the Soviet, how it came about. But how do you respond to the charge that the neocons somehow instigated and advocated civil war in Iraq? Uh, n nobody that I know of in the United States, and I mean nobody, advocated civil war. I think the argument uh, is over whether uh, replacing Saddam Hussein with another regime was in the best interest of the United States. And I think that you have to look at uh, the events uh, in Iraq as a response to two separate analytical questions. The first, was it right to overthrow Saddam Hussein, as to which I think unmistakably the answer was and is yes. And second, how well did the United States do in the aftermath of the overthrow of Saddam? And I think obviously there, uh, the result was much less satisfactory to the detriment of the United States as well as to Iraq. Let me pick up two points in your last answer. Let's go first about you have no idea about anybody in the U.S. who advocated civil war. Let me get you, you know, 1977, there was a, a, a paper uh, published by by three arch conservatives, none other than David Wormser, Richard Pearl, and Douglas Fyth. This is in 1977, before they became such major figures in the uh, administration's foreign policy. Uh, and here is what they, they said. They said they predicted that a post-Saddam Iraq would likely be ripped apart by sectarianism and other cleavages. But, and here is the punchline, Ambassador, called on the U.S to expedite such a collapse anyway, quote, unquote. Well, I don't know that quotation. I can tell you, though, from my own experience in the Bush 41 administration, that many people feared that overthrowing Saddam in 1991 uh, would lead to the partition of Iraq. And many of America's friends in the region, in Saudi Arabia and Kuwait and Egypt, uh, among others, said, we don't want that to happen. Now, in fact, uh, the, the Saddam regime continued in power and continued to be a threat to other states in the region and to peace and security internationally. So I, I understand the argument about the uh, fear of Iraq fragmenting into three pieces. But the issue that the United States had to confront, and it was decided by overwhelming bipartisan majorities of both houses of Congress, was that the Saddam Hussein regime had to go. Indeed, you are absolutely right, Ambassador, except for the fact that this convergence between the Democrats and the Republicans was based upon what turned out to be later on some false uh, information about the WMDs. And the neocons, no. the charge goes, no. was, uh, in what way, no, go ahead, in what way, no. Look, the, the argument about overthrowing Saddam, in the United States at least, 
uh, had nothing to do with Saddam's imminent use of weapons of mass destruction. The but argument on his, was about on his the ownership of those weapons. On you know he is possessing it. That's what that's what the administration went to war. No, no. The threat posed by the regime itself and its propensity to use weapons of mass destruction, as it had used chemical weapons against its own citizens in the Kurdish areas, and as it had used chemical weapons in the war in the 1980s against Iran. And that point, I think, remained true. Had Saddam succeeded in his effort to lift UN but sanctions, but then again, Ambassador, here we are going UN to talk about inspectors. No, let me let me finish. Intentions really. and programs, rather than reality and position and hard WMDs on the ground. If you remember what uh, Defense Minister said, he said we know exactly where they are. They are around Tikrit. Well, I don't think anybody has solved the problem of the chemical weapons that uh, the Iraqi regime itself declared in 1991 as part of its compliance. Uh, with Resolution 687, the ceasefire resolution. And that, I might say, is a critically important point because that had nothing whatever, let me stress this, it had nothing whatever to do with faulty intelligence. It had everything to do with the uh, declarations that Iraq itself made. In 1991, Iraq said we have enormous stores of chemical weapons, their declaration. During the entire period between 1991 and 2003, the UN uh, tried in many different cases to say to Iraq, show us where the chemical weapons are, or if you say you've destroyed the chemical weapons, show us the records, show us the facilities where the weapons were destroyed, uh, let us speak to the scientists who supervised the destruction, and Iraq flatly refused. We'll take a short break now. Stay with us. We'll come back in just a second. They are Monday morning quarterbacks. If the quotes are accurate, that means that they are at war with the advice they gave some time ago. Tony Snow, former White House spokesman.